What's going on guys? Who would have thought we'd be here three weeks ago? I mean, maybe five weeks ago, before the season started, you thought, hey, we're three and two maybe. I mean, but the road to getting to where the Bills are right now, whew, wow, wouldn't have written it this way. Obviously, as you guys know, Bills beat the Rams on Sunday, on the road, in L.A., 30-19, they improved to three and two. They win their third straight game, and the season is back on. It wasn't the easiest win, uh, although they won by oh, you know, more than ten points again. They beat Arizona by fifteen. They beat New England by sixteen, and then they beat LA by eleven. You know, three pretty convincing wins, I guess. But I wouldn't call the Rams game an easy one. The Rams had the ball for, first of all, for more than 35 minutes of the game. They had more total yards. They had more first downs. They had fewer penalties. But they committed four turnovers, and the Bills were able to capitalize on that. But, like, think about how the Rams started. That first drive, four first downs. Uh, they end up kicking a field goal, but they're moving the ball. If you look at, like, the stats, I mean, the, the Rams had, like, how many plays of like 15, 20 yards? At least like six, right? I I don't have the number on me exactly, but just felt like they were gaining chunks of yardage at times throughout this game. Anyway, at least the Bills come back. They score a touchdown with Justin Hunter. Tyrod did a great job on that play. Um, you know, actually on the drive, you come overcoming the snap where he winds up over the guard. And then on 3rd and 19, shakes Ogletree outside, cuts it back inside, picks up the first down. That's, you know, say what you want about him throwing the ball, but that is the type of play that, you know, you don't get from every quarterback. On third and 19, Tom Brady, Carson Palmer, maybe Aaron Rodgers, but probably not. Drew Brees, probably not. They're not running for that first down like Tyrod is, but they can throw for it. Don't know if Tyrod would have been able to. Anyway, going back to the touchdown, Tyrod, third and goal from the four. Um, the Bills only send two receivers out there. They leave eight in protection. And what do the Rams do? They drop eight in protection and only rush three. So somehow, with eight guys back there and only two receivers, eight defenders and only two receivers, he finds Justin Hunter in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. And really encouraged by that play. Tyrod was... You know, shook a couple guys, made them miss, just extended the play. Great job overall. Um, second drive for the Rams. They picked up two more first downs. They got into Bills territory. Then Adolphus Washington gets the sack. And then Gurley fumbles. And then the Bills score three plays later for a 13-3 lead. It's amazing. Like here are the Rams. They're getting a lot of yardage. They take a sack and then they fumble. And they're down 13-3. And the Bills look like they're in complete control. But the Rams give the Rams a little bit of credit. They battle back. They scored 10 straight points. They're in it. And you have yourself a game. The Bills kicked the field goal before halftime. Whatever. You know, the Rams get it back. It's 16-16. And then Nikel Roby Coleman. The pick six. Undercutting the wide receiver. Taking it back. Literally, like, waking up the Bills. Who seemed to be sleeping at that point in the game. Maybe it was the heat. Being out west. Being on the road. I don't know. But he literally woke the team up. The offense was putrid in the second half. They were riding LaShawn McCoy the whole way. What a guy he is. 18 carries, 150 yards. What more can you say about the guy? He was their best player and may be their best player. With Sammy Watkins out, I don't think there's any arguing. He is their best player. It's because throwing the ball is, is, you know, with Robert Woods, and they're not getting any separation. They And they're dropping passes. Woods dropped one. Um, Clay I had caught all five of his targets for, you know, 73 yards. Tyrod threw over the middle of the field to Clay a little bit. But for the most part, Tyrod, once again, threw for under 150 yards, I believe, right? So, like, can you keep winning games this way? I, I don't know. I'll get into that in a little bit after we wrap up the end of the game. Um, the Rams end up kicking a field goal from the four with six minutes to go down seven. Thanks, Jeff Fisher. Sure, there's some strategy to that. that You can defend it somehow, but I don't think it's, you know, you're on the four. 
I, I'd go for it there. Even if you don't, you give the Bills the ball on the four, and then you know you trust your defense to stop them because you're doing that anyway. You're trusting your defense to stop them and get the ball back so you can score a touchdown. So why not try for the touchdown? Because if you don't, you're still trusting your defense to stop them. And they're on the four. And you're going to get the ball back. Whatever. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, naturally, the Bills go give it back. After, and they give it back. Three and out. Um, they go to Walt Powell on the third down. He's only target of the game. You need the third down. You throw to Walt Powell. He's made a couple nice plays here and there, but I just don't think that's where you're, you're trying to go with that. But thankfully, the Bills get the stop. The Rams, you good old tricky Jeff, Jeff Fisher. We talked about that last week. Try the fake punt, and he uses motion before. How? Why even tip your head at all? Like, you're using motion before you're trying a fake punt? Don't get it. And then the Bills get the ball back, sniff it out. To their credit, and then they get a nice run from McCoy. Tyrod makes his biggest throw of the game on third down. Touchdown to Goodwin. Stands in there, gets hit. 11 point lead. Bills win. Like I said, Tyrod didn't play great. Missed Woods on that third quarter overthrow that should have been a touchdown. Maybe if that's Sammy, Sammy catches up to it. I, that's supposed to be Tyrod's bread and butter. So I want to see that. Like I, I'm still nervous about the passing game. Don't get me wrong. Um, I know that. Uh, I've kind of crapped on people for being like, well, I shouldn't, I could be as happy as I, I could be happier because the passing game wasn't good. Like, I don't know, Bill scored 30 points. I'm good. I'm just nervous about the passing game going forward. That said, quality of the win really doesn't matter at this point. Just get the win. It wasn't pretty, but like I said, you scored 30 points on the road. You're in second place in the AFC. The AFC looks kind of weak. Other than New England, who is definitely better than the Bills? Definitely. Pittsburgh, maybe. Maybe definitely better than the Bills. Is Denver? Ah, I don't know. Defensively, maybe. Shout out to Zach Brown, Lorenzo Alexander, by the way. Zach Brown leading the league in tackles. Lorenzo Alexander leading the league in sacks. Who would have thought? Who would have wrote it? Like I said, Mario Williams can't do what Lorenzo Alexander is doing. Okay, dude. See ya. Thanks for... You know, three and a half or whatever good years. But, really, I truly mean that. But, he definitely quit on them. Bills, three and two. Staring down some pretty good games on the schedule here. San Francisco at home this week. Is there an easier game that you can get than San Francisco at home? Cleveland at home? You're going to get that later in the season. I don't know. The unknown variable, obviously, is that Colin Kaepernick is now starting, even though his completion percentage, QBR, and yards per attempt are pretty comparable to that of Blaine Gabbert over the past, you know, he made eight starts, Blaine Gabbert finished the last eight, or the last eight starts of last season, and then the first five this year. You know, Kaepernick was 2-6 and six last year, he averaged 1-4 this year. It's not like, is there a monumental difference? I would guess no, but there's no denying that Kaepernick is certainly a more athletic quarterback, certainly has a better arm. That guy throws missiles, but he can't put any touch on the ball. Maybe that's changed. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of eager to see what's going to happen. The questions that he has to face, obviously, is he's coming off of surgeries uh, to his knee, shoulder, thumb, like a bunch of stuff. Is he healthy? We'll find out. He must be healthy enough to play. And obviously, how will he respond to the, on the field at least, to the criticism about the anthem? Now, for Bills fans, I urge you, bo sure, boo him. That's fine. Don't do it during the anthem. Sing the anthem. Sing it loud. Sing it proud. Very loud. Let him hear you. Don't boo him during it. You can boo him when he takes the field. That's fine. Don't throw stuff on the field. Don't be morons. Okay, because the whole country is basically going to see how we react to this. So, you don't need to burn his jersey. Bring an American flag if you want. Bring it. Wave it. Fly it. Wear it. I don't care. We already wear red, white, and blue. Keep it going. The only thing I'll say about the Kaepernick thing 
is I first of all I don't agree with it. I wouldn't do it that way. But I will never blame somebody for non-violently standing up or kneeling, ha, huh, for what they believe in. Or he, he's not stupid. He's educated on the subject. He's made that point very clear. I get why it's sort of threatening to people. I don't know if it necessarily should be. I don't think he should necessarily care because he's not being violent about it. He might be, you know, kind of. He's being very polarizing about it in the method in which he's chosen to, you know, convey that. But at the same time, it doesn't hurt you. Like, uh, it doesn't affect you. And so I think it's, honestly, it's, I, I, ultimately I just don't care. It's kind of brave from Kaepernick, I guess. I Like I said, I don't agree with it. I wouldn't do it. Um, but I don't want to fight him over it. I just simply am like, nah, dude, you do you, whatever. Go ahead. Do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. Whatever. It just doesn't It doesn't affect you. I don't care. I don't think you should care. If you want to talk about that, we can. I'm done with that. Blaine Gabbert was very was wildly inconsistent. Something like 9-30 and 30 in his career. So it's not really that um, surprising they would make a change to Kaepernick. And just overall, the 49ers, are just, they're just not a very good team. And the record of 1-4 reflects that. They murdered the Rams coming uh, into the season. I think they beat the crap out of the Vikings last year to start the season, too, on Monday Night Football. And look at what the, how that ended. The Vikings still went to the playoffs, and the Niners were not good. Uh, the Niners have lost four straight games by 19, 19, 7, and 12. Last week, they couldn't keep down Drew Stanton and the Arizona Cardinals, and the Bills beat the Cardinals with Carson Palmer. I know that that law typically doesn't apply in the NFL, but I still think it's kind of telling. The Niners are 31st in offense, 20th on defense. They're 31st against the run. And the Bills are third running the football. There you go. There's your matchup. The lone bright spot, I would say, for the Niners has obviously been Carlos Hyde. He scored in four out of five games. Um, the team's rushing numbers are inflated a little bit by Gabbert, who has something like 170 rushing yards of his own and a couple of touchdowns. But Hyde's been good. I'll give Hyde his credit there. At wide receiver, the lone threat the lone threat has really been Jeremy Curley. I think he's the only receiver they have, tight end, running back maybe even, with more than 12 catches, so there you go. Torrey Smith has been invisible, only has like nine catches. Still a deep threat, but not, I mean, does that change with Kaepernick? I don't, I don't How much can it change, really? Defensively, Bowman's out for the season. That crushes them. They have older players, Antoine Bethea. Ahmad Brooks, those guys can still play, but they're not as athletic as you know some of the Bills' weapons on offense. They have some youth, obviously, with Eric Reed. Jimmy Ward missed the last two games, don't know his status. DeForest Buckner missed last week, don't know his status. Um, those are some young, promising players, but they're just not it's, not, it's not a finished product yet, they're just not there. The Bills just need to take care of business early. Go get some points. Don't let them creep around, hang around, and drag it out. And don't do what you did against the Rams. I get it. The Rams were at home. It's a tougher thing. But now the Niners coming all the way east. Let's just take care of business. Get ahead. I don't care about your in-app passing game. Win early. You know, put the game away on the ground because they can't stop it. They're not good at it. This is just a game you simply can't afford to lose. Look at your schedule coming up. You got the Niners, the Dolphins, two teams that are currently one and four. You should beat them both. You can get to five and two, like I said last week. Can you get to five and two against a six and one possibly Patriots, and then maybe steal some steal a game? You know, I don't know against New England, but in Seattle, I'm not ready to go there. Oakland maybe, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati looks beatable right now. They might fall to two and four this week against New England. We're in this thing. We are in this thing, guys. So I'm going to pick the Bills. We're going to beat the Niners. 27-13. Give me that, right? Like, let's beat a team. They're not good. Let's do it. 27-13. Guys, let me know how you're feeling. Hit me up on Twitter. As always, Twitter handle, same as the username on YouTube. I answer just about everybody. We talk football. I talk baseball. I talk wrestling. Whatever. I talk it all. Um... You know, have fun this weekend. Please be respectful. Don't act like fools. But above all else, go Bills.